fantastic time picking up clear loves Evelyn randomly and things like this. <laughs> <laughs> they ba well, they bat out the Morgana that was a first pick. <laughs> Unfortunately, we won't see a needlessly oh, large rod dang. stacking Dumble Doge Morgana this game. Dang it. Hecarim as well banned out there to make sure Thalfrey. That's a serious ban it. So, it is. from EDG. <laughs> All right, yeah. So the, yeah, the thing is EDG, you know, Death was talking, he was like, yeah, we want to just play strong lanes and we want to win our game quickly. Yeah. Uh, we want to move through these group stages. Yeah. This is going to be very good one-on-one -on -one laning experience for every single lane going down the line for all of Ashikas. This is going to be a very hard battle. And Edward Gaming, let's see what sort of uh, early picks they want to go with for strong lanes if they want to go. Well, the there's uh, EDG's Callista being picked up that last game that made an impact. It gets banned out this time. Oh, Urgot on top of it. And Urgot as well, like you said. Ari goes towards Energy LeBlanc, quickly thrown at Pawn. We're going to see what Koro decides to go with this game. It looks like they may lock themselves in some early jungle. Yeah, it might be that Rek'Sai there for Clear Love, and I like this. Just make sure he sticks with his early yeah. pressure, and we've seen his level two ganks getting first blood after first blood. May as well stick with it. If you want to win early game, you want to go with Rek'Sai then. Or Quinn. Yeah. Right, Kobe? Perfect. Exactly right. <laughs> Mid lane, oh, but... of course, right? For the roaming. Yeah, but... I wouldn't actually be surprised if Thaldrum picked Ribbon here. It's one of his favorite champions. He loves that. They have been playing that over in the Turkish League. And why not pick your favorite I'm champion waiting, and have fun? I'm waiting for the actual lock-in. He keeps hovering. I know. I know. Favorite but champion, I, just, I just want to see him actually I've, do it. And I feel like he will do it one of these days. One of these days. Sivir definitely may be for an option for or for them. Oh, getting yeah. into these fights against EDG is going to be something they need to do and make sure that Edward Gaming is always pressured. Oh. The Rumble gets locked in for Thaldrin. Definitely can make an impact in the top lane with him. He wants uh, the best experience you can get. He says, show me your Nar, Koro. Yeah. I want to taste <laughs> Let that's me experience true. this. Yeah, with thing. that Hacker Room ban, that's just about what left is uh, rather left up. We did see Maokai making a big impact last game. I don't know if it's going to be the same here. Thresh being hovered over by Pawn. That would be a pickup for Mako, who also has his Annie to go for this game if he wants. Yeah, he can pick whatever he wants here, of course. And Pawn thinking about the Jace there, very oh. signature champion for him. but. See whether it does actually come through. I actually like Nadia's picking away the Sivir from Deft as well. Deft a fantastic Sivir player, but Horn now thinking about the Nar. We're going to see yeah. it. Koro's Nar against Thaldrin's Rumble. And this is actually comfort pick versus comfort pick. Yes, it is. We'll see how they match up. This is exactly what Thaldrin wanted, right? Yeah. Top lane experience. Now, the, re the reason that I'm not really thrown by that Jace hover over is because you can't really, since the top lane has been whittled down like this and you're expecting an AD top laner, uh, you can't really afford to run an AD mid laner in the state of the game. In Cinderhulk, there's no way any team gets away with stacking one type of damage any longer because there will be a tank on the other right. team that will stack that resistance. The thing that I'm really scared about for Besiktas here is the fact that Deft is basically undefeated on Jinx. His Jinx is incredibly strong. Jinx does incredibly well against Civil. Very true, and it kind of seems like um, Bashik does kind of want EDG to pick these champions that they yeah. have all these undefeated yeah. and close to undefeated records on so they can, you know, experience what is the wrath of EDG. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because he, by the way, because he target banned the other two. But it's uh, on the other side, Bashik does also have a whole lot of comfort picks as well. So it's not like Besiktash have lost out necessarily. Here's, here's what they've got. They've got an amazing AOE wombo combo right. for Besiktas. They've yeah. got the Sijuani Rumble. Great, yeah, that by itself is enough to destroy a team fight. When you boost it up with Sivir Speed, they have the ability to win one of those five-on-five -five fights towards the middle of the game that they're looking to for the comeback. As Spawn said, probably their best chance here is group up and try and get some AOE done. Yep. Hover in that Zed, but like you there said, you Kobe may not be that AD that they need. It's the AP, and they lock in the global, the twisted fate for Pawn here to be making some plays and affect every lane in the game. This the is double globals, yeah, yeah, this is going to be fun. <laughs> the, the twisted fate, Rek'Sai, yep. so many plays with well, the triple teleport. global, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really? you got to teleport in the top lane. So uh, cross map plays a plenty. It's a very good answer to a team that wants to group up as five. Yeah, but Energy probably wants to split push a little bit if he's going to go with this Diana pick. And decent lane matchup there once he hits level 6 against Twisted Fate, you have to think. Definitely. Uh, the Assassin of Choice 
very good chances as long as they don't you know come out of laning phase with a huge deficit right usually the control is pawn pushes that in and he disappears from the lane instantly. also the problem is with the three global teleports mm -hmm. one person split pushing is never just one person split pushing right could easily have several members teleport in to even the number. Yeah, you can't exactly take the fight to the teleport guy this game. Yeah. There's always going to be another one. The, the old adage of uh, go to the source of the teleport that I was talking about <laughs> in season one of the LCS is much harder to pull off when there are three sources of teleports. <laughs> well, they've actually got four global abilities, don't they, really? Because Deft also has a super mega death rocket he can throw into the fray. EDG can sort of be everywhere at once offering damage. It's ridiculous. But Soldrin, he's got a teleport as well. So they've got a little <laughs> bit of global pressure. But we'll see what Besiktas can do with what they've got because the Ocalys on a power pick there in the Sejuani has shown that he can perform well on that one. Nadius can start up the fights with that on the hunt and has shown some fantastic Civil play in the past. Yep. We'll see how this one's going to work out. But they do not want standard lanes. My god, do they not want standard lanes. Besiktas picking into the fight comp. Something EDG loves Ooh, to yeah. do. So we are going to get another game of brawling. We have had awesome games so far here at the second day of the Midseason Invitational. And it's only going to get better. The crowd is ready to get into these next games as well. And ties could be happening. Ties could not be happening. There's been a few games that definitely yep. didn't go the way people would thought today. We'll see how this one plays out. Yep. And remember, for all you TSM fans who are very sad right now, you are now Besiktas fans. You are rooting yeah. for Besiktas <laughs> to get a victory here. So Besiktas should win this fan vote if all of the TSM fans <laughs> are now voting for them. They move over to Besiktas. Makes sense. All right, as we load up into our third match of the day, let us know who you think is going to be getting an upset by tweeting at LOL Esports with hashtag BJK win or use EDG win if you think the LPL representatives will come out ahead. Yep, this is the only chance that uh, TSM also have to get try and get back in this. We have Besiktas upset and then some more victories later on. Well, we'll see what they can do, of course. Besiktas have a lot of comfort here, but EDG They've got signature picks across the board, and as they move out onto the rift, I'm frightened for Besiktas here, because Pawn, one of the best Twisted Fate players, of course, it's difficult saying that here at MSI, where Westor is just around the corner showing that he's phenomenal, yeah. but, man, you know Poros, Nah, Clear Love's Rex side, this is ridiculous. You know what has worked against uh, Pawn's Twisted Fate? Camp him early! <laughs> Give him, like, six deaths early on. That didn't actually help. <laughs> it worked against his Twisted Fate. It did not win the game, but... Yeah, true, true. <laughs> the Twisted Fate did not win. Oh, oh the oh, flash oh, death oh, sends oh, Dumbledore with quick feet. Juan actually blows the ghost here as well. Dumbledore, he does have the shield. Pawn, though, he's still running after him. There's not a whole lot of follow-up damage. Another stun. Oh. they looking for some... Harpoons around the side, but Domino's just casually walking away. Beautiful Crescent Slash. Energy getting money out of that one. Yeah, money and four summoner spells. Yeah. Double Doge only had to spend one to get all of those movement spells. A couple of flashes with the Ghost and Exhaust. That was pretty hard for EDG, I'd say. They're a little, <laughs> yeah. a little careless as well. They're like, I saw HQ do it. <laughs> Let's all go. No, they're like, I've got a stun, guys. Monkeys We've got to invade. Monkey Let's do, do heaps of sure. stuns. All right, so with that played out, EDG, they're going to have to have a very safe laning phase here. You can attack quite a few things. Clear Love can still get in for the ganks. Maybe it's that focus to the bottom lane. When Fnatic lost their flash, that was the first focus coming in to get yeah. the support. Yeah, exactly. The thing is here, Clear Love without flash, so much more difficult to pull yeah, off that true. early move with Rek'Sai. She really does lose a lot of the early power without the ability to close this with not only tunnel but as well flash the thing is sejuani a much weaker early jungler um still can as we've seen go yeah. for the early gank however uh if they meet up in a two versus two scenario fairly difficult to come out ahead whoa whoa and already nadia's has to blow the flash there in the bottom lane as the death sentence is coming out from maker you wanted to lane against uh, yeah. the, the Jinx from Deft and the Thresh from Mako. You got what you wanted. So aggressive. The Exhaust and the Flash is down. The exhaust is up for Dumbledore, but they just cannot decide to trade early with that attack speed increase from Deft, and they quickly gain a lead. 9-2 to two in CS there. Dumbledore actually didn't come to lane or come to the Gromp with full health as well after that level 1 action, so ooh, narrowly missing there on the Death Sentence, but... 
sort of already at a deficit after taking that early level advantage. Yeah, and we'll see if this deficit holds after the wave shoves up to the turret, because there's potential CS here uh, for Besiktas. Uh, but the point for EDG is to shove them in under the turret and try and... Uh oh here's that early focus towards the mid lane of Pawn's TF. Yeah, Theocalee's looking for it. Nice Moonfall as Pawn's going to flash out of the way. Gold card is available and Energy unable to follow through. But Pawn, no summoners. Nicely waiting there for the Arct Arctic Assault and then the Moonfall, as you said. But there should be a rinse and repeat there, as you mentioned. No summoners on that mid lane. And here comes the Theocalee's. Very early, saying, wasting no time. We're coming back into this one, but maybe not. Does have a ward available. Curbs it. Clear love, get over here. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I don't have any more escapes. Well, with him clearing that ward, they may actually get this advantage. Clear love sees that, and they could use it just in the second if energy steps out. Yeah, both junglers sitting on wards around mid lane. Mirrored opportunities yep. here. And everybody's sad. Pawn, though. Uh, Ghost oh, just there's came a back flash up. moonfall though as Bond's in a bit of trouble. Clear up right around the corner. Energy eating a lot of damage. Clear up with so much wild cards oh. don't land. The prey seek is there. Bond is so low. The level up comes in. There's the pale cascade. Can energy survive? Clear up wants the tunnel. Oh. We'll see whether he gets it. There's the cues and first blood for Clear. Kobe, you happen to say if they met 2v2 with that Rek'Sai early, it would kind of go in favor of the Rek'Sai. Yeah, it's hard It's hard for Sejuani to win uh, two versus two situations. But Pawn, he burned the Ghost. That was the only one that he burned early on. So while well, it looked like EDG going really, really deep, Ghost comes back off. Oh, here we go. Clear love once again. Yeah, he's, he's caught himself in a 2v1 situation, but doesn't seem to mind about it because he can just take that Dark Passage to safety. Maker handing that one out to him. And man, Clear Love's Rek'Sai is frightening. That's such a great composition. We see it a lot from Wolf and Bengi in the jungle as well. The Thresh Rek'Sai, tunnel in, lantern yep. out, you're good to go. It's so safe. Like, it's definitely nice to have a buddy in the jungle. Always. <laughs> <laughs> the buddy system working out here for EDG. Koro, quite low there on the top side as Thaldrin. He's going to overheat as well. Wants to find a harpoon, but of course he's silenced, so he's not going to be able to. But Koro getting pressured out early. Yeah, so I always really like watching the uh, Gnar Rumble matchups. It's very telling of top laners and a really good way to judge them because it's so easily tipped. Um, it really depends on who's willing to play more aggressively early on uh, because the first one to get that small advantage can then snowball it, but early on, uh, unless you have vision of the jungler, it's very risky to go uh, that, that hard. That was interesting from Koro. He made sure that he wasn't going to regen his health and then teleport. Very strange, but Crescent Slash is going to come through again here for Energy, and Pawn, not going to get hit by that one, continues just to shove out this way. Thaldrin going to equalize the teleports in the top lane, so no early <laughs> dragon pressure. <laughs> He's not even level 6 yet, man. That's not that funny. Um, I think the teleport before Health Pool uh, got back up was because their minions died. Yeah, but Dumbledore oh, can't get taken down solo. Really nice death sentence, but there are three members. Death gets excited as he takes down the Jedi. Destiny coming in. Nadius has to be careful. That play at max range was beautiful. Nadius trying to do some work, but Death, oh. he's so low. The Oculus, he wants to pick up the kill. Flashes <laughs> for it, and he's going to grab the sneaky Jinx before falling down. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Clear Love helping Koro get one, and EDG. Action everywhere. <laughs> Energy's is, like, where'd it go? Is that not... <laughs> well, <laughs> Energy, he should have tried to... I think he did try, but he should have tried to uh, go on to Pond right, uh, right. as he was teleporting because he was in vision. But that's probably why Pond uh, came in with a blue card. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> is there any better feeling of getting ganked by a jungler and coming away with the kill <laughs> for the or bottom lane? a few lane? kills and, on top of that? Yeah, and then on the top side, as we saw, you... This is a matchup that you want to play aggressively and you want to yeah. uh, you know, trade damage without backing down. But if you don't have vision of that jungler, the first jungle gank can turn, change the entire situation up in that top side. And Clear Love's the one to get up there because obviously Sejuani was ganking bottom. And also now, Koro, he's got the Hex Shrinker in his back pocket. This matchup is going to be a whole lot easier for him at That's this it. stage. Just keep up in the face of Thaldrin. Try to shut him down. 
can see Mako oh, trying to get the wards in so they can now close in. Nautius, they just do this without hesitation. Nautius took a few seconds to look at the minions, and now oh, he's too close to range. Play. Played on to the chompers, and these guys are using everything they have. A grab on the Dumble Doge as well as Death keeps oh. the correct focus on to Nardius, and the one-two punch comes up clean for EDG. There's just nothing missed from Mako at all. Not at all. Great synergy between that bottom lane. We said before, there may be a two different languages there, but they play as one mind. They certainly do. Energy is going to manage to back. He's been putting on a lot of pressure here. Oh. Hey, Oro looking for it in the top lane. Thaldrin's going to oh. flash into the wall in celebration. That, that tree is too So, low. to be fair, the Hex Drinker had nothing to do with that. <laughs> that no. was just one versus one outplay and a really good job of Crow jumping on another opportunity for himself. But man, uh, remember as well, this is the Deft Jinx. Oh no, no Deft it. Oh. the wall into that jump is Nadius not going anywhere and Deft is going to pick up another one. The sonar hook. Oh, so nice. Me. That was ridiculous. All right, which lane is the next kill coming? Yeah. Let's just wait and see. Not sure. BJK are definitely trying to stay safe here within these lanes, but right at the front door every time is EDG. It doesn't even seem like they've really backed here. They're always on the side of the map of Ashik Toss. Nine to one now, nine minutes in, and the first turret will fall in that duo lane. It is bottom. 69, now 70 to 34. That's yes. Jeff said the plan was to get our strong picks in lane, win our lanes, and quickly finish the game. Yeah. So, <laughs> check mark on the first two for them. The third one, quickly finish the game. There's the Destiny into the top lane, though. Thaldrin, he's been caught out by this Twisted Fate. Going for the turnaround. Pawn taking a lot of damage, but it's not going to be quite enough as Koro picks up the kill onto Thaldrin. 0-3-0 zero, zero now for this Rumble. He's having a tough time. You know, I said it seems like they're almost not backing. You guys mentioned three pretty much yeah. globals on this team. They are always going to be on the map trying to create pressure. You can see... The flash play! Thaldrin had those wards and still went down. This time, EDG is just going to go straight for the fight. Clear Love flashes in for the knockup, and Koro from the top lane here is going to be able to continue the fight. Yeah, and Dumbledore's going to fall down. Double kill for Deft. His energy's going to get exhausted. Koro, he's burning down. Is he going to die? Megan, I'm not in time. His energy picks up the shutdown. Nadius. Could be in trouble with Megadeth Rocket, sails by, but Deft is getting the turret tank for him, gets excited and runs away from the rumble. And 8, 1, and 2 now for this Jinx. This is ridiculous. Uh, this is also going to be a lot of mid lane pressure. Should be able to take down the turret as well. And EDG off to, you could say, a good start. Yep, you could say. 7. 1,000 gold to lead at 10 minutes, yep. 11 minutes. This clear love's going to take away the Raptors, probably going to escape as well as he's quite low on health. Keep it on par with, with more kills yeah. than minutes again. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. But they're on 16 at 11 minutes. That's a lot more. That's more than we're used to. Uh, Trying new things. Yeah. Well, let's <laughs> see what happens now. They put Def back towards, not back towards, but now in the top lane to start cleaning up CS, continuing to focus a lot of power into him. He's already turned on, just spent another 1,800, so he's just gonna level up to Super Saiyan now. Deft has 6,000 gold on him. 11 and a half minutes into the game with eight kills. That's more than double the gold. Yeah, you look at the other side. 3.2 thousand gold ahead of his lane opponent. All right. Oh gosh. Well, let's see. Mishiktas. What can they pull? Defensive warding uh, helps to an extent, but the other team has twisted fate. So trying to pull a right. five-man ambush from a bush, you know, with some vision, still probably the best hope. However, pawn pop is all. <laughs> everyone gets found. Yeah, there it is. The yeah, Besiktas so Esports Club standing true behind their team. They are putting up one hell of a fight here against EDG, who is just trying to close that stranglehold down here. The Sheik yeah. is now hopefully getting these team fight compositions together. There is a game changing ultimate from the uh, Theocles that can come in, but they have to be able to follow up perfectly. Because even if they hit everything spot on, I still think it's going to be a hard fight for Besiktas to pull through. And EDG do have a lot of their gold on Deft as well. Absolutely. I mean, theoretically, if Besiktas managed to point. destroy him early on in a fight, they might be able to get something done. 
We're looking for a way for Shikdash to get back into this one. We'll see whether they can actually manage to follow through on that because they're losing their turrets. They're going to have to try and find that fight sooner rather than later. Yeah. All right. So more likely, we'll take a look at how quickly EDG can execute the victory here because this is this is their goal now. Yeah. Is You mentioned the time before. Time does matter in the... Uh, the tiebreaker tie situation. situation. Right. So the quicker you can end these games, the better. If something crazy happens and a tiebreaker does pop up, I don't, not quite sure. I don't think that a tiebreaker for them uh, would pop up now since they did also beat Fnatic. But it's also best practice. Yeah. To win games quicker. Certainly is Besiktas though. Ah, positioning around this mid lane. Got to stay together here just to try and answer the fact that EDG have so many globals. If they get caught on their own, there can be a whole lot of friends available in the Chinese lineup. Really not able to defend these wards either. You see them quickly being taken out, and it takes a lot, quite a few members just to regain those little parts of their jungle. Yeah. Pawn and Mako, the Rome team here. The rest of the map. The rest of the team, I should say, up top, and it's going to be Deft by himself in mid. They are one or two one twoing this with the AD carry mid. Yeah, of course, the safest member of, of the course. team in the mid lane. All those escapes. All those escapes. 20 Jeez. seconds on to Dragon. They probably won't need the full team for that either. But like you, like you said, guys, let's get that time in there. EDG is definitely resting a little bit before they make this final push. I think it makes sense here because Deft just hides behind his money. It's, it's a big wall it. right now. Yeah, it's a big wall. Gonna keep him safe. Or he will just beat you in the face with his bag of money. <laughs> yeah. Kill you before you can get to it. <laughs> that would work too. Whichever way. We've talked about how much it would hurt being slapped in the face with 6,000 6, gold. Be pretty painful. Yeah. So they're able to keep all three waves pushed while pulling three members back for the objective. Uh, EDG, you can say that is complete map control. Mm. Um, they still have some minions up top and control of both of these bottom two waves. So if they collapse here, should be able to get that last outer turret uh, before returning to base to buy. Took a little detour here for Def though. So a few minutes or a few seconds, he's gonna have to walk all the way back from the red buff. Now though, he does have the red buff for the shove, uh, and they still have control of the bottom lane as well as mid. So they should be able to collapse and make their pincer. Yeah, and Deft is very, very conscious of this CS deficit statistic that we picked up of 17.5 behind because he is doing his very best to try and change so that one. When your sample still size one. from the first day is two games, yeah. <laughs> you get some overblown statistics like that. You could. Now, because today, now he wants to blow him out of proportion even more in favor of himself. Or is this just going to even it out? So now it's about where it should be. Not sure. Well, we'll see if he can still do anything on that 8, 1, and 2 Jinx. We know him to be very good at AD carry in general, but using those summoner spells to make it look even better. It'll be hard for Besiktas to get to him. We did say there's a lot of gold on him. I don't know if that's going to be everything they need if they just take him out in a fight. Pawn now to the bottom turret by himself. Oh, my word. Yeah. Just two spells putting Thaldrin to half HP there. We're not used to seeing TF doing that much damage at 16 minutes into the oh. game as well. The Sivir wave clear might not be there in time for this wave. They could get a good chunk of damage before she arrives. Cool. Well, they're going to have to arrive fast with a Jinx. Yeah, Those turrets are going to fall very not fast. That big a chunk. Oh, good nice shield. shield. I like your thought. Yeah, I like yours. It's the little thing now. <laughs> That 12,000 gold lead is making it hard for Besiktas to guard their base, but doing so ever so slowly now. Oh, they and find a few of their picks. The Akali's just off on the slide. This Glacial Prison great spot. to Deft would be what they need. The choppers go down. Deft flashes out. Oh. There's the summoner spell used to get him into position. Here comes the Destiny oh, the and gnar. the blowback as well from that Nar. Koro coming in huge, and they are going to continue to wall up this fight. Yeah, the Akali's getting down so low as well as Deft picking up more kills. And after that incredible, now EDG just roll over the fight. And Sejuani ult looked like it slipped out of his hands as he was charged <laughs> there. Oh, did, did, uh. oh, energy coming in, pawns going oh, down so whoa. low. The ace comes down, but I love the hero play from energy. Loves to do it. We've seen him taking Barons on it, trying to get a few kills for himself put him in there. The pitch up. Put up on the board, exactly. <laughs> and the first inhibitor will fall, fall here as EDG cracks the base. At 17 and a half minutes. Right. Jeez. Talking about speed, since the new season, this is 
one of the fastest inhibitors that we have seen on back of a 19 to 2 score here. So let's take another look uh, at the Achilles. And he got into a great position. Uh, but here is where you see it's a li little greasy on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Johnny ultimate goes to skew, and from then, oh, goes downhill very quickly. Deft, he does have that red buff that he went back to go grab before coming to shove, and that'll be enough to chase down Double Doge and get the reset on his passive. Whew. Oh dear. There's a lot of damage, and I, I like this from Energy. He's got the emergency build. I want heaps of yeah. sticks. <laughs> I'm gonna hit him with heaps of sticks. Gotta go nuclear. Yep. Got him. Got <laughs> my dynamite. Blast ready to wise. take him down. It's actually, you know, if, if you're in an emergency situation, pick up as much flat ability power as you can just to try and weather the storm, maybe. Yeah. It's not quite Dade-esque where he just builds Magi's when he's losing by a ridiculous margin just in case you can get something from it. But I like it from energy. Just, I, I just, I've got 860 gold, guys. What do I buy? Flop? He's, one. Yeah, he's playing the wizard game there, just stacking wand on top <laughs> yeah. of wand. He's going to yeah. make one yeah. super blasting thing. wand. That's right. He's got to clear out those rings and get two more for himself. See which way he Ooh, decides to go with it. Deft again on the front line of the mid push. This time he's got a few buddies there. Oh, onto the tank as well. Theocli is not even able to take the damage that Pawn is putting out from his twisted fate. Oh, oh he gets out. the fast feet on that one. Dodges it, but he cannot dodge out three members. The damage he traded back to Besiktas there, still big. Yeah, it was, but can't survive against four oh, members dear. of the team as the Super Mega Death Rocket comes through. Energy just tanks it up. Not sure what that was doing. So everyone else managed to get back to base, but Super Mega Death Rocket just in protest of the death of the mid laner of Energy. <laughs> Need the fireworks skin for Jinx. Yeah. Shoot him off in honor of Pawn. <laughs> A noble sacrifice. <laughs> they did shove up both uh, the mid and bottom, though, and so they're knocking at the door once again. Pawn does not have his ultimate. So he'll have to walk his way all the way back up to the rest of the team. And that means that they may just retreat for, well, Baron's up. You know, it's 20 minutes into the game. Have they ever taken one right on spawn? Eh? Nope, they're just gonna bait it. Yeah. They know the fight would lead them into the base. Usually it is a prerequisite. They have to check off Baron first before they go in. Oh, the Theocles! Yeah, they're going to cook this one up. Got a little Sejuani for dinner. They're going to back off now. The Baron should be theirs. It only took a few members to get that in for him. And we still see Bashik just trying to clear out the base here. So Baron up for EDG. And they're going to go straight for the base. Yep, just 20 minutes into the game. Baron was prepared. 30 seconds late on that one where EDG, but we'll give it to him. They take that one down very easily. First Baron of the game, seven turrets to zero. It's all Pawn spot. Yeah. Wouldn't have died. They would have had that sucker oh, on man. spawn. Yep. We'll have to have words to him <laughs> afterwards. We'll see what he was really thinking. Yeah. The interview. Dragon is alive. It looks like they just want to objective clean up around the map as well and get it objective free. No worries. No cares in the world right now as they are up quite a bit of gold. We talk about 10,000 gold at 20 minutes being like a problematic margin, that. but when you're at about 20,000 gold at 20 minutes into the game, that is yeah. absurd. And you've got a build water cutlass on your Nar at the same time. Theocles once again caught out. Pawn's going to use the destiny. Super Mega Death Rocket sails by as well. Through the wall to the side as Nadia says, nope, I'm not walking into that one. I have Koro going full damage here. I like it. All death ends build. onto Thaldron. Aptly named as a Nar comes in as well. Energy gets exhausted as Deft picks up that kill. Theocles the the got it. Sorry, is still dead. And Nadius trying to get some damage back. EDG are fairly low, but man, look at the damage from Deft. Woo! As he's just going to take down that poor Ow. little Sivir. Dumbledore able to get the exhaust off, but Deft being the hero oh! flashes over the house to get some oh, hey! triple. Doke, Death just like a matador right there. Sejuani <laughs> runs right back. Oh. And that's going to be <laughs> the game. Oh, the celebratory deaths on the fountain. His energy looking to pick something up, and he's going to fall down. And EDG, they get the rest of the job done. What a game from EDG. The fastest game so far coming out of the midseason. Invitational at 22-30, 27-3. EDG take down Besiktas. Oh man, that was just pretty brutal stuff from EDG. Not really much more to say. It's job well done. Yeah.
That game, very well done there from EDG. And they delivered on everything that Def said they would in the interview. Talk about timely victories. 22 and a half uh, minutes here for EDG. Very, very promising for them moving forward. Absolutely. At the, MSI. the thing in the beginning of the game, EDG went a little hard, very careless with their summoner spells, but at that point, they pawn or deft and Mako should not have been able to come to lane and quickly push out Nardius and Double Doge in that situation. It should have been Nardius trying to do that early damage, knowing the exhaust was down on Mako. They lost a big advantage there in that early part of the game. Bottom lane was definitely brutal for mm -hmm. them. And it was just Mako and Deft showing off how incredibly well they play together as a unit as well. I mean, Absolutely. these death sen sentences across the side coming through, and man, it's just, it's, they're a frightening bottom lane to contend with no matter who you are. Absolutely, and for a closer look at EDG's win, let's check in at the analyst desk.